it, the the first the first thing that really hits you, I think, for me is just the the, the size in general, um, just the the gravity of how much um, machinery goes into putting these things together and, and the structures themselves. I, th I think that's the thing that just first struck me um, was just the, the overall size of it and, and the impressiveness of it. Just and my mind works a little bit different in that I, I think about how you know the engineering that goes into putting these machines together and you know how to get them built and and all of that but but once they get operational and and you have an entire wind farm um, together that uh, you, you really start thinking of it as a as an entire uh, facility not so much the individual towers themselves and you know people come take a look at them you don't really realize that that, that many feet up in the air you know you're, you're anywhere from 200 to over 300 feet depending on the tower that you're at that it's it's quite a quite a large structure up there the, the nacelle is the structure that sits on top um, it's just kind of a square that's it's it's called the nacelle it holds most of the the guts of the the internal top portion which is and uh, that takes the motion of the rotors and converts it into um, kinetic energy which we convert into electricity so um, you're looking at that nacelle area up there is typically the size of a, a large school bus or, or a large RV um, and that entire thing rotates to catch the wind so there's a lot going on up there. Dan why don't you go ahead and start and uh, go up first and, and then we'll we'll get everybody else going from there. One thing that people are always surprised to find out is that the entire nacelle itself rotates on this point actually right here. So it's constantly searching for the optimal wind it can find. If you recall, um, there's sensors up on top that are measuring wind direction and speed. And based upon the biggest hit it gets for direction and speed is it's going to readjust itself to put it put the blades in the most optimal portion to catch as much wind as possible. So this entire thing is rotating and the blades themselves are rotating back and forth as well just to catch the best possible wind it can. I think a lot of people don't realize that something the size of a bus of an RV is being rotated on top of this tower section. So it's pretty cool to me. You got the rotor out there. Here's your main bearing and shaft. It attaches to the low end of your generator and then it goes back to the high speed output of your generator, which is in the back. I, I really enjoy it, um, especially on a day like this where you can get up there and kind of pop the hatch and, and take a look out there. This is really flat land, so any chance you get to get up at uh, you know 300 feet or so and, and take a look around and see what's out there, it's, it's kind of neat. My description of them is just an annoyance because of the, and the basic is because of the, the noise that you're hearing right now. It's just very annoying, very unpleasant. Uh, and like, uh, even when I'm inside the house, uh, if I have my TV on, I can, I can hear them inside with the TV on sometimes. So yeah, it's just not pleasant to look at them, I guess. So, how many wind turbines can you see from your house? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. Okay, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 
that's about it for right now that I see. Oh no, I see more over here. 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111. Oh, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, and that's about all I see. I built my house in 2004, and uh, it was just farmland all around. Uh, what was the no, view like? It was a beautiful view. <laughs> no turbines, no transmission lines, no red lights that flash at night. The reality, it's not it's not neat. It, you know, when I first saw turbines, I, the first ones I saw were up near Bowling Green. And I thought, wow, those are pretty, pretty neat. And when I first heard about them coming here, I didn't really think too much about it. But the more I learned, then it's like, no, I don't want them here. So, and I even uh, went to another county and, and listen to them and I thought, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. But then the more you talk to people and understand what they're going through, then it's like, no, you don't want them. I think if you had to live here, you would understand 